So now uh, we'll talk about telescopes and it'll be, it'll seem kind of similar to what we were just talking about, but there'll be some differences that we uh, introduce later. So we'll have another picture. So this will be, so I guess there's a couple of different, obviously there's a lot of different kinds of telescopes. And so there's a lot of different designs and eyepiece configurations that there can be. So if you think about like old timey pirates and they have uh, that telescope that they put up to their eye and they just use it to see something far away, uh, that's one type of telescope. And that's going to have a, an objective lens that's a convex lens and then a, an eyepiece lens that's a concave lens. And so the light is coming in from this object that's far away. And then it's going to get focused towards the eyepiece. And then it'll come into your eye. But it's not, it can't focus over here. And so again, it'll have to be one of those ray tracing things where it'll focus back here somewhere. And so again, just from the configurations, the this uh, image, The image will be bigger than the object. And again, it has to be, the image has to be far enough away from your eye so that your eye can focus on it. And so this is like a spyglass, another name for this type of telescope. Uh, then you can have a different type of telescope that looks um, so other telescopes. a lens configuration. That looks similar to a microscope where you've got two convex lenses and Again, you'll get some image over here that's bigger than the perceived object size. Uh, 
the difference, of course, is that the, the object distance is much greater than any of these other distances, whereas for the microscope, the object distance was uh, small and it was close to the objective lens. But telescopes are not constrained to just use lenses, and some of them use mirrors also. So these are called reflecting telescopes. And again, there's a bunch of different kinds of these, uh, but one of the most common designs is you have a mirror. So here's where the light comes in. Here is your mirror. So the light will come in and it'll all get focused at some point up here. And then depending on the type of telescope, there can be a mirror, another mirror here, and then a hole in your telescope that lets the light come out this way into the eyepiece. Or you can have a slightly different design where, again, there's a mirror that's focusing the light onto, and so this is the, the big mirror is called the primary mirror. And then the little one is called a secondary mirror. So you can have a similar thing where you have a primary mirror over here the big one at the bottom. And then the light comes in. It gets focused somewhere up here. And then you have the mirror angled slightly differently. And then you have your eyepiece over here on the side. So telescopes can use, and so the eyepiece is a lens. So telescopes are using both mirrors and lenses so that you can see far away things and make the image look bigger. Then I mentioned that telescopes can allow us to see fainter things, more dim things. And that's because we can increase exposure time, meaning we can just, uh, it's like the way that our light works or our eye works is that uh, we are looking at something and we see something, uh, but there's not really like, a long integration time for how long, uh, like, we can't increase, if we look at something for longer, we don't see it in more detail or anything like that. We just still see the object. But with a telescope, if you look at something for longer, you can collect more light from that object 
which is increasing this exposure time. And that allows you to see the object in more detail or at a higher resolution. So uh, this is kind of the big difference between uh, if you use a telescope and you just want to look at something with your eye, you'll only get to see something so faint. But if you put like a photographic plate or a, an electronic detector on your telescope, uh, those things can integrate the time that it's observing the light and allow you to see fainter things. So you guys probably care more about the microscope stuff. So we spent a bit more time on that, uh, but I care about the telescope stuff. So I wanted to talk to you about that as well. And so these are both applications of mirrors and lenses that you guys have now learned about. Just like the thin lens equations applied to microscopes, we can also apply them to telescopes. However, we're going to make a couple of different alterations. <clears throat> so let's do a simple example for our telescope. And let's say we have two convex lenses, so it'll be a bit similar to the microscope example. The two lenses will have some focal length. So let's say this is the eyepiece and this is the objective lens. <clears throat> And the difference here compared to the microscope is that your object is way over here out at infinity somewhere. So it's so far away compared to the other distances that we're not going to give it a distance and we're just going to call it infinite. So the objective lens has some focal length F0 or FO. And then the eyepiece has some focal length Fe. <clears throat> so the thin lens equation where one over the focal length of the objective equals one over the image distance of the first image plus one over the object distance, if we plug in that the object is at infinity into the object distance, then we have one over the focal length of the objective equals one over the first image distance plus one over infinity. So one over infinity in physics, we just call this equal to zero. And so then this equation just becomes one over the focal length of the objective equals one over the image distance. And so if you're given the focal length of the objective lens, then the distance to the image, so if this is your image, this distance is equal to the focal length of the objective lens. Then just like with the microscope, the image is going to be closer to the eyepiece lens than the focal length. 
So this distance, which we'll call uh, Let's call it X for now. Is going to be less than the focal length of the eyepiece lens. And so because the that distance X, which is the distance between the image and the eyepiece lens, because that's less than the focal length of the eyepiece lens, the image and the eyepiece forms on the left hand side of the eyepiece lens. <clears throat> and now, depending on the telescope, uh, the where that image from the eyepiece lens is going to form is going to depend on uh, some of the geometry and the distances between the two eyepiece lenses. With that being said, a lot of times We want the image in the eyepiece to look like it's really far away from us. And so, again, so this was our image. So just like in the microscope example, we're now going to treat the image like the object that is the light is entering the eyepiece. <clears throat> so given this distance x, and the focal length of this eyepiece if we plug that into our equation <clears throat> And so remember, we're now treating the image like the object in the second step. So this X is what's going to go down in here. And so what you get is that the object is, oh. so that's, yeah, so I guess I'll rewrite the, equation with that substitution. And so now if you're given <coughs> the eyepiece focal length and the distance between the image and the eyepiece, then you can calculate where the, uh, the final image is going to be projected. But what if we don't know what this distance x is?
one thing that you can do is let's say that we assume that the image distance that we want goes to infinity. So we want it to look like it's far away from us. If we do that, then we would get that the distance between the image and the focal length if we replace this infinity here now we get 1 over focal length equals 1 over the distance from the eyepiece lens to the image plus 1 over infinity we saw that this goes to zero. And so if your eyepiece focal length is equal to the distance from the first image to your eyepiece, then in essence, you're getting a, you're gonna make the object look like it's really far away from you but you've now magnified it by going through this process of going through the objective and then the IP lines. So that magnification is what we want when we're looking through a telescope. The equation for the magnification of a telescope is a bit different than it is for a microscope. So the magnification for a telescope is going to be these two equations. So when we are looking, so let's say here's the person and they're looking at some star. <clears throat> the width, and I guess maybe a star is not the best example. Let's do the moon. So when you look at either side of the moon, there's going to be some angle that we call theta. And has, I have, as I have it written here, this is the theta on the sky. And then if I look at the moon through a telescope, the angular size of the moon in the telescope is going to be larger than the angular size of the moon when I look at it with my naked eye. So instead of tracking the physical size of something, like uh, if you're looking at an amoeba through a telescope, you start with some size of, let's say, a tenth of a centimeter, and then you magnify that 400 times, and now it's 40 centimeters. And that's something that your eye can see in better detail. So instead of measuring, for example, the diameter of the moon in meters, we instead just measure it with an angle. And so, just like in a microscope, your Magnif you're magnifying the size of something and we just use meters or centimeters to measure that size. With a telescope, you're still amplifying the appearance, the uh, 
uh, size that something appears to be, but we're using an angle to measure that size instead of uh, a unit like a meter. And then, so if you have the magnification of a telescope and you know the angular size of something on the sky, then you would know how big that object will be in your telescope. The other way that you can solve for that is by knowing the focal length of the objective. And then the, the focal length of the eyepiece. And if you compare those two things, then you'll get the magnification of the telescope. So another slight difference between lenses and mirrors. So we've talked about earlier that telescopes can have mirrors instead of lenses uh, that they use to uh, focus the light. So in this example, where the light comes in this way, at the base here, you have a concave mirror and then the light came in bounced off the mirror and was focused at some point here and then you might have a smaller secondary mirror and then your eyepiece lens here So now we've got three optical things. We've got a primary mirror, a secondary mirror, and then uh, an eyepiece lens. With very large telescopes, so when we were talking about lenses, we were talking about small things, like you could measure them in a few centimeters. But for telescopes, and especially big telescopes that astronomers use to do research, it's the length scale is much larger. You can have several meter uh, mirror diameters. And so uh, there's a slight difference when you compare small mirrors to large mirrors. So for large mirrors, or I guess I should say large spherical mirrors, don't focus light at a single point. And so there isn't really a defined focal length. And so when I say spherical mirrors, I just mean if you were to imagine a sphere and cut off part of it, uh, that's what some of these concave mirrors would look like. Um, so uh, the picture would be something like this. So this is the part of the sphere that would make up the mirror. As the parallel light comes in, 
when it gets reflected, maybe these two cross here, but this one is gonna cross in different places. And so there's not a single point where all the light focuses. And so we can still use the equations for the thin lenses where we needed the focal length. It's just that now we define it slightly differently where the uh, focal length for a spherical mirror is equal to the radius divided by two. So instead of being given the focal length of a mirror, you might be given the radius of the mirror and then you just need to divide that radius by two to get the um, focal length. And so the radius that you would be given, uh, so if I redraw the spherical mirror again, if you were to pretend to complete the sphere, the radius that you're given is the radius to the center of that sphere. And so one last thing that I want to show uh, so we have this equation for the magnification of a telescope. And let's see how that compares to the two equations that we had for the, or I guess we'll just compare it to this equation for the magnification of a microscope. So if we remember the trick that we needed to do uh, with this equation for telescopes, when we set the object distance to infinity, then this became one over infinity and that goes to zero. Uh, then for the objective lens, you see that the image distance is equal to the focal length of the objective lens. Then if you repeat that for the, so this, is for the objective. And then if you do the same thing for the eyepiece, so I'll call this image one. And then this image distance is the distance from image one to the eyepiece. And then this will be the location of the second image. So if we do the same trick and we Now, instead of having the object distance go to infinity, we have the image two distance go to infinity.
then you get one over Fe equals one over distance from image one to the eyepiece plus one over infinity. That goes to zero again. And so you're left with one over the focal length of the eyepiece equals one over the image distance from one to the eyepiece. Or if you flip that upside down, then you get the focal length of the eyepiece is equal to the image distance one to the eyepiece. So if we take this and plug it in for the object distance, because that was the, uh, when we think about the object of the eyepiece, it's the image of the first, uh, that the first lens created. And then we take the first image distance and we plug them both into this equation, then you see that you get the magnification equals negative focal length over uh, focal length of the objective over the focal length of the eyepiece. And so when you compare these two equations, you get the same thing. And so this, this was just to show you that the magnification really does come from the same place. You just are doing this extra math where you put your object out to infinity and then you put your final image out to infinity. And then when you do that math, you get this final answer for the magnification of a telescope. 